Hey YouTube, how you doing? <laughs> okay, so finally today we're gonna get us a video on all these Mercedes diesels with DPF issues. No, I'm not talking about spraying some sort of cleaner into the DPF or taking the DPF off and spraying it out with water and putting it back or no taking it somewhere and paying someone to pull it off and do some sort of treatments on it or something. My research is telling me that no matter what you do to that thing, it's going to give you more problems on down the line. And then it's related to other problems that happen all because of this whole emission system that's on these particular vehicles. So, my solution is different. My problems, I've already taken it and had it cleaned twice. Still, still having issues. It won't regenerate. Where it's not regenerating, I go in and out of limp mode. Limp mode isn't fun and I bought this vehicle to have a nice vehicle for traveling and when you got a vehicle that goes in and out of limp mode you can't travel with it and when you got a vehicle that's unreliable because of all of these kind of issues you can't really travel with it well my friends I found a solution in deleting it I found all kinds of forums giving information on getting it deleted and that it's better, but no one actually kind of documented what, who done their tune, what they done with their tune, what they, you know, what companies were doing it, and the process. So I'm going through this. My car is not reliable and I want it to be reliable. So I'm currently in route right now to take this thing to a shop to have ECU tuned on it and there's options you can get it tuned with stock power or you can get a stage one stage one will give you they say around 50 around 50 horsepower and you know 70 70 ish foot pound of torque extra out of it by doing stage one well in the budget right now it doesn't really allow me to uh spend the extra money on the stage one so for around six hundred dollars you can take it to a shop and they will put a tune on it that will delete the dpf not only do you get to delete the dpf but you can delete the egr which is a common issue the swirl flaps another common issue and the add blue system another common issue so the the one tune in the same cost deletes everything and makes your vehicle reliable then you no longer have to deal with you know cleaning the dpf every so many miles or the ad blue having issues or filling the ad blue or you know none of the swirl flap issues none of that get rid of all of that stuff so, like I said, I haven't seen no videos documenting what actually happens, what you have to do, pros, cons, uh, anything like that. Right now, my DPF is plugged up. Like I said, I'm in and out of limp mode. My uh, acceleration is god-awful. I will insert a clip of my acceleration right now where I merge onto the highway because I just had to stop and fuel. So I recorded my acceleration back onto the highway for you guys. That way you can see what I'm dealing with right now when it's not in limp mode. And then I'll record it again when I leave the shop and merge back onto the highway. I'll give you guys another recording so you can see the differences on what this thing does after the tuning. So that way you guys out there will get a little bit of insight on what the tune will do for your vehicle. So when I leave this shop, I'm still gonna have the plugged up pipe on my car. 
I don't predict my acceleration getting a whole lot better. Maybe a little bit. But then the tune is done. So my car will no longer be reading any of that information from the DPF, from the AdBlue system. The EGR is not going to be trying to do whatever and messing anything up. And the swirl flaps will stop working. Um, none of that will have to be messed with other than the DPF. The DPF will have to come off. So I'll document that too once I get that off. I'll let you guys know what it's like before it comes off with the tune and after it comes off with the tune just so you guys know what to expect. And like I said, this isn't going to have the stage one. This will just be going with stock everything other than no none of that emission system stuff. So that's where I'm at with it at the moment and I'll be coming back to you here in a few minutes with the magic of YouTube showing you what it's like after everything is done. Stay tuned. YouTube as if you can't tell my couple of minutes turned into a pretty long time as you can tell probably by looking through the windows it's substantially darker outside so there's not gonna be another acceleration to show you the improvement from the tune because after being told I could drive into a shop and have it flashed and be done with it. I drove five and a half hours one way to get to the shop that said they could do it. Now I've sat at that shop for over six hours waiting to get this tune done. And then 45 minutes after they closed, they told me that this particular make and model the year range I'm assuming 2012 actually requires the ECU to be taken out of the vehicle and sent to the tuning company because it has to be bench tuned it can't be tuned while it's in the car that would have been nice to know a couple of days ago when I contacted the tuning company and they told me to find go to their website and uh, they would direct me to a local place I could take it and have it done. Malone Tuning is who I had contacted. It's MaloneTuning.com. And uh, yeah, so I just drove five and a half hours to sit in a little room waiting on my vehicle for six and a half hours to be told that there's nothing they can do I'll have to drive it back home and take the ECU out myself and then mail it to this company and then they'll fix it and ship it back to me then I can put it back in and voila problems fixed we'll have to see how that goes but uh, as of right now I'm making the uh, five and a half hour journey to get back to my house so I can go to bed because I have to work in the morning. I have to get up at you know, 6.30 in the morning to go to work. And according to Google Maps, I'll be home sometime around 2 now, still with a broken vehicle. So as I leave you guys with this video until I get that done, and then I'll record all of that because I'm going to keep this documented because all of you guys I know if you clicked on the video, you probably have a Mercedes, and you probably have the 350 diesel engine in it, and you're probably having the same kind of problems. So uh, I'll keep you posted on how this is going. But as for now, if you have a 2012 GL350, don't let them lie to you and take you into the shop. You got to send that crap off somewhere. So. Don't bother with it. <laughs>
But until I get there, uh, signing out.